Welcome to another Coding Like Mad Python tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to give you a quick introduction about how to bring a webcam into your software. In Python, this is super easy to do because of things like OpenCV that have just made this process super easy and super simple. So if you want to bring a bit of that computer vision into your software, hang in there because I'll explain how to do it right now. As always, all the code I'm going to be using here, I'm going to put into a specific GitHub repository. You can see that in the description below. For our library, we're using OpenCV today. I previously published a tutorial about how to read video files in OpenCV, and a lot of the API functions are going to be the same between that and this. Turns out OpenCV views a camera in a very similar way to how it views a file. So if you want to check out that tutorial as well, I'll post a card here for that. So getting right into it, we need to open up a video capture interface. We do that using OpenCV's video capture function, and we're going to provide it a number as well as a backend. Now, I think the backend here is optional, but it's a good idea to actually keep track of which one you're using. I'm going to use direct show here. This changes a little bit about how the numbering is done as well as how reliable I found it. Uh, for a lot of my purposes, I found direct show to be a little bit better behaved, so that's the one that I'm going to show here. You'll notice I've selected number three here. This is the USB device number that we're going to be using. In this case, this happens to correspond to the third webcam-like device on my system. Zero tends to be kind of the default device, but for someone like me who's using multiple webcams, it's pretty important that I know which one is which. It's possible to dig up information about the specifics of the webcam device, but there isn't really a kind of rhyme or reason to how these are numbered. In fact, sometimes if you unplug a webcam device, it can result in reordering of these numbers. Or if you reboot your computer, that can sometimes end up renumbering these. So unfortunately, there's going to be a little bit of trial and error here unless you build a system which will hunt down the specific serial numbers of the device and identify them that way. Much like reading a file, we can actually read from a camera in the same way. This just uses the cam.read method. We're going to have a return variable, which is basically going to say, hey, things worked, as well as the image, which is going to contain the frame that we captured from the camera. In this case, we can go ahead and use cv2.imshow uh, and then a file or a uh, video window. So this is the window name. If we wanted to have multiple windows open, we could just specify different window names for each one. And then we say what? image we're going to throw in. And much like in pretty much every other Python package like this, we're going to have to put in some kind of method which says, hey, could you wait for a little bit and show me what's on screen? I'm going to use uh, a no value here, the default, which basically says, keep this running until I tell you to close it. Um, and then finally, I'm going to have a cam.release method. So if you just wanted to take a quick snapshot with the camera, well, this is all there is to it. So if we go ahead and we run this, we're going to get my webcam here, and it's just going to show a picture of my desktop. You'll notice here the webcam is actually lit up. Uh, that's because the webcam is accessed and has been claimed by the Python uh, software. So at the moment, no other software is able to access that webcam. And this is important. You'll notice I'm talking to you on some kind of webcam device like this right now, which means had I had OBS, the software I'm using to capture the image of me, access this webcam, I wouldn't be able to show it to you because only one program can effectively grab a specific USB device at a time. They're kind of uniquely uh, grabbed by the file handles. So as long as this window is open, the webcam is going to continue to be locked so that nothing else can access it. But as soon as I close this window, the software is going to terminate, that cam.release function is going to run, and you'll notice that the webcam has gone ahead and been released. Now, anything else can grab a hold of it, including OBS software or another Python program that I've run. This means it's really important that you actually release the webcam when you're done with it. That isn't to say that it won't release automatically when you close the program, it should, but 
I've had a lot of experiences where I've had to actually reboot my computer in order to get all of the USB devices to get released. So if you want to make sure that you don't have any problems of that sort, just go ahead and clean up all your file handles by calling release when you're done with the specific webcam, and hopefully that'll prevent any problems. In the worst case scenario, you can, of course, reboot your computer, and this should clean up everything. I have found on a few cases that I need to actually move around which USB uh, outlet I am using in order to get it to kind of figure out that it's a different device or that it's not a claimed device. Something I think is really important to mention at this point is that USB webcams on a modern computer are a lot more limited than you would think. Particularly because they're USB 2.0 devices in most cases, you might think, well, hey, I've got like a million USB 2.0 slots. Why can't I just plug them all in at once? It turns out that the limiting factor on most computers, and I'm speaking of a sample size of like five computers I have in the room right now, is something called the USB controller. So this is a chip responsible for routing data on the actual controller itself. I don't know more than that. I just know that basically each USB controller in my experience can practically handle one, maybe two USB webcam-like devices. Now, you can plug as many keyboards as you want and they don't, you know, do much with the amount of data. But for a USB device, which is really using up all of the data available on that line and all the processing power, basically one controller means one USB webcam. So when I need three, four, five USB cameras connected to a machine at the same time, I actually have had to install internal USB extension cards. I always wondered what these things are for. The answer is for people like me who need extra USB controllers. For some reason, this particular technical issue isn't talked about anywhere. Like, it took me a long time to find somebody who actually knew what this issue was. So I'm sharing it now in the hopes that this prevents those of you who are currently wondering, hey, why is it that when I plug my third webcam in, it stops working? Well, this is why you don't have enough USB controllers. So of course, practically, you don't just usually want to grab one still frame with your USB device, you want to be grabbing a whole movie. So to do this, we can just go ahead and instead of reading a single image and putting it on screen, we can just replace this with a for loop. So what we're going to be doing here is progressively reading a uh, image, throwing it on screen, and then we're going to ask wait key to pause for one millisecond and specifically check what keys might have been entered during that period. And if that key happens to equal the Q key, we're going to release and exit the program. So let's go ahead and uh, run this program. And if we do, we're able to look at ourselves in all of our handsome glory or whatever we wanted to be doing here. And as soon as we hit the Q key, it closes and we are good to go. So of course you could add as much functionality as you wanted here with uh, different keys. So for example, you could throw an S key in here that writes a file to disk. In fact, let's do that now. So let's go ahead and test this functionality. Uh, once we're running it, I hit the S key. Now I don't see anything immediately, However, that's just because PyCharm is not updating. If I actually look in the folder itself, I can see right here the folder has been created. And if I double click on it, we get a lovely snapshot of myself. Well, lovely is stretching it, but anyway, you get the point. For the last part of this tutorial, I want to show you how I make customizations to my cameras. Now, some cameras have a whole bunch of options for them, and some cameras have virtually none. Uh, for example, the camera I was just using has the ability to do things like focus, change its frame rate, whereas a lot of times I'm using a capture card for grabbing television signals and it doesn't know how to focus since that's not a thing that it can do. On the other hand, it knows how to deinterlace differently and that's not something that my normal camera knows how to do. So every camera is going to be a little bit different. However, the API options are basically what's available for any plausible camera, so not all of these are going to work for every camera. Um, I'm just going to, for this one, show some code that I am putting on the GitHub repository and go through how it kind of works. 
So first of all, this code is taking the specific device as an argument uh, for what you want to use. Now, I've got this on the GitHub repository already. It's called TestCam, and if you run it, it shows uh, different cameras. So as before, camera three is the one I want to use, but if I didn't know which camera was which, this test cam uh, code that I have, which is shown here, uh, is going to be able to help you figure out which camera is useful. So like if I run test cam two, it pops up some random junk. Um, Often that indicates that uh, that camera's being used by a different piece of software or is in fact not available at all. So for example, this blank screen, I recognize the aspect ratio. This is actually the camera that I'm talking to you on right now. So it's able to connect enough to know what size it should be outputting, but because I'm using it with another application, it's basically not able to actually grab any useful information from it. Uh, if you did something like try to access a camera that doesn't exist, you're going to end up with an actual crash when it tries to use the data there. So in this way, you're able to figure out what kind of is the camera you're intending to use. So going back to our camera options, uh, I'm going to be using camera three for this. And we have my beautiful cat shown here. Now I have included in this case, two camera options, which I think are pretty important to be able to manipulate. Both of these tend to have an automatic option available. So if you don't want to set them by hand, it's probably better not to touch them at all. However, in this case, I'm going to show you how to modify them yourself. So for instance, if you wanted to avoid an automatic focus, it's pretty helpful to be able to set the focus manually, at least so it doesn't change. I actually use this quite a bit when I'm, for example, trying to capture a TV signal where you end up with a moiré effect, that is a weird repeating line on an old camera or on a CCD or whatever you're looking at, where you kind of get like weird line structures forming. Anyway, you can get rid of that if you just pull a little bit out of focus. So uh, here I'm going to change the brightness and the focus. The focus value I have at zero as my default and my brightness right at the middle of the row, uh, 128. Now, as before, I've got a for loop where I'm reading video file constantly, um, except this time I'm, well, I've got a stream video instead of my usual cam icon. Um, but what I'm gonna be doing is letting the plus and minus keys or uh, the greater than and less than keys respectively uh, actually correspond to changing the focus. So I can make live modifications. So for example, I can make uh, my cat brighter, or I can make my cat dimmer. Um, I can also change the focus here. So let's go ahead and pull way out of focus, and then I can pull back into focus just by tapping the button over and over again. So I'm able to basically do anything that I want with the camera. Um, more advanced techniques I'm not gonna go into in this particular video, but the way I normally do this for my stream camera is I actually have my stream set up so that I'm able to run second processes in parallel with this, which are grabbing the image and doing calculations with it. So I'll create a second process, which is getting a constant feed of images, which it then say runs through a neural network and maybe even a third process responsible for saving specific frames of that video so that I can essentially multitask for this code. This is particularly important if you want to make sure that, for instance, you never miss a frame. Well, there's one process only responsible for grabbing frames from the camera and another process only responsible for making sure that things are displayed properly. And that way, if a third process responsible for say, running a neural net happens to take more than one frame to run that particular moment, it doesn't cause you any problems. Um, this approach is maybe a little too advanced for a basic tutorial, but if people are interested, let me know in the comments below and I can look about adding a more uh, advanced tutorial for that sort of thing. Um, yeah, if you guys have ideas for other things you want to see, feel free to comment. I am still working on my AI for Classic Games series. I hope to have an update to that soon. Uh, next week is going to be another shorts video. Uh, the last one was uh, me breaking Tetris on the NES. If you didn't see it, you should check it out. 
out. It was a lot of fun and YouTube seemed to like it. So uh, I'm pretty excited that people were actually watching quite a bit of that one. So let me know what you're interested in the comments. As always, feel free to ask questions there too. I do answer them. And uh, I hope to see you guys next time. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Welcome to another Coding Like Mad Python tutorial. In today's tutorial...